Welcome. In this lesson, we'll talk about Einstein's only Nobel Prize, which is for proving that light has the properties of a particle and a wave. We'll learn that light exists in packets called photons and that photons have quantized energy. We'll also learn important equation number two, which allows us to calculate the energy of a single photon. Humans have known about the wave nature of light since before the days of Isaac Newton. But in the early 20th century, two phenomena challenged that idea. The first is called black body radiation. As we heat an object, it starts to emit light. The hotter the object is, the higher the frequency of emitted light. The color of the light and the amount of the light coming from the object cannot be explained using wave-based physics. The second phenomena is called the photoelectric effect. When light shines on specific metals, the metals can emit electrons. This also cannot be explained using a wave-only understanding of light. A man named Albert Einstein received his only Nobel Prize when he explained how the photoelectron effect can be explained if we think of light as made up of many, many particles of specific energy. Now, you won't need to know anything further about either black body radiation or the photoelectric effect, but trust me that this is a fascinating story and well worth your curiosity. A photon is a particle of light. This means that a flashlight is literally a photon cannon emitting more than a billion, billion photons every second. These photons have no mass, but they carry momentum and energy. The energy of a photon is directly related to its frequency through important equation number two. Specifically, the energy of a photon in joules is equal to the frequency times Planck's constant H. Planck's constant is probably the tiniest number you will ever use in this course and probably any other courses you take. It is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules seconds. It will be given to you on exams. The idea that light is a particle with a specific energy means that we can only have amounts of energy in whole number multiples of h times nu. In other words, we can have 10 photons, we could have 11 photons, but we cannot have 10 and a half photons of energy. Scientists say that the energy of light is quantized as opposed to continuous. If continuous energy is like climbing a ramp, then quantized energy is like climbing a flight of steps. You cannot be halfway between one step and another step. Each step represents an amount of energy equal to H nu. If you continue your path through chemistry and physics, you'll eventually learn that all energy is quantized. To summarize what we've learned so far, light exists as a spectrum with long wavelength light corresponding to low frequency and low energy. As we shorten the wavelength of light, we change its color and increase its frequency and energy. Don't forget that humans can only see a narrow range of the colors in the universe. We typically define light by either its frequency or its wavelength, and these can be interconverted using equation number one. Light exists in little packets of discrete energy called photons. We calculate the energy of an individual photon using equation number two. While you only need to know equations one and equations two for this class, this last equation is a shortcut to calculate the energy of a photon from its wavelength. However, you could also get there by just using equation one and then equation two. Time for a practice. Young people are able to perceive violet light all the way down to 370 nanometers. What is the energy of a photon of this light? Pause the video, see if you can answer this one yourself. Well, in order to get the energy of a photon, we need to know its frequency. Unfortunately, this problem gives us wavelength. We'll use equation number one to convert wavelength to frequency. Remember, we'll have to convert nanometers to meters first using the math in blue. 
Once we have the frequency, we'll plug it into equation two and solve for energy. This means the highest energy photon that the human eye can see, and only when you're very young, is 5.37 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. To put this amount of energy in context, the impact of a falling snowflake contains two and a half trillion times more energy than a single violet photon. 